Although this Norwegian garden is tiny, only 150 square meters, I've incorporated two small lawns into its design. They form the hearts of the west and east gardens and are a direct tribute to the front and rear lawns once so popular in England. I think the beautiful green grass provides a perfect backdrop and pleasing contrast to the blousy cottage garden flowers I love. Interestingly, visitors to the garden seem more intrigued by the lawns than by the flowers. Perhaps that's because the tidy green stripes and neat edges are, if nothing else, quintessentially English. I use an environmentally friendly method of lawn care, and lawn weed killers have not been used here for four years. In this video, I'll describe how I constructed these lawns and how I maintain them using the same traditional techniques that were used by my grandfather in England. Grass, like any other plant, requires the right set of conditions in order to thrive. Indeed, different grasses have their own different requirements. For any lawn, the most important factors are good direct sunlight and air circulation. Trying to grow grass in deep shade is very difficult. Thereafter, you need good drainage, and ideally any drainage problems should be sorted during the construction phase. When constructing these lawns, I built up the root zone material to a depth of 30 centimeters of consistent sandy material using an approximate mix of 70% sand and 30% topsoil loam, which I mixed by hand on site. This lies upon a deeper layer of coarse gravel, which itself covers a landfill of rock used by the developers during the plot construction. The lawns are flat, with a slight fall away from the house. I know that the drainage is sufficient due to the fact there are no puddles or surface water even after the most torrential Bergen downpours. Here in soggy Bergen, the west and east facing lawns only have acceptable direct sunlight during the growing season. Then, however, there are long daylight hours with up to 20 hours of daylight midsummer. In contrast, during the winter, the lawns are in complete shade for months and often under deep snow. This uncontrollable variable will prevent me from ever attaining the high standards required of luxury lawns, as the fine grasses will simply not survive the winter here. These lawns were sown from seed. Seeding a new lawn is significantly cheaper than buying turf, even though you have to contend with the weed seedlings that will compete with the young grass during its initial growth. I've settled for a utility grade lawn and that has meant using the hardy and shade tolerant meadow grass and rye grass and putting up with a fair few annual meadow grasses that somehow manage to flower even when the grass is mown short. An initial mix of fine grass seed was mixed with a shade tolerant variety comprising of mostly meadow and rye grasses. Each year the lawn has been overseeded with a similar mix after raking, spiking and top dressing in spring. Suspending old CDs on the line works as a great bird scarer. With the lawn established, regular mowing is perhaps the most important aspect of lawn care. For these small garden lawns, I think a manual or push mower gives the best results, as well as being environmentally friendly. But the sound of a lawn being mown with a traditional cylinder mower is rare these days. The mechanical clipping sound made by the cylinder blades has been substituted with the whining of electric mowers or the roar of powerful petrol-driven rotary mowers. These supposed labour-saving mowers produce often substandard results whilst polluting the environment with their carbon emissions and their noise. I use an old Qualcast Panther to mow both lawns. It's a traditional hand-push cylinder mower with a 30 centimetre cutting width. The principal advantage a cylinder mower has over a rotary or hover mower is that it cuts the grass plants rather than tearing them. A six-bladed cylinder rotates against a steel strike plate which I set to the desired cutting height. This design makes many more cuts per metre than a rotary mower, giving a finer finish. A 
rear mounted roller accentuates the classic striped finish that is so admired. The roller also permits the mower to be pushed over and along the traditional lawn edge, a useful feature which distinguishes it from side wheeled versions of the cylinder mower. The front mounted grass box assures all clippings are collected too, which helps prevent a build up of thatch on the lawns and subsequently prevents damage from pests and diseases. Here, the lawns and edges are cut almost every day from May to September to between 10 and 20 millimetres depending on the time of year. Each lawn takes only about five minutes to mow, including cutting the edges and putting away the mower. It's worth remembering that the smaller the garden is, the easier the lawn is to maintain. I use the following procedures when mowing the lawns. Whenever possible, I mow when the grass is dry, but that's impossible to do every day in Bergen. I'm happy if I can mow at least three times a week. I'll do a visual check that the lawn surface is free from stones, gravel and children's toys and other debris. Then I check the blades are set to the correct height. I aim to remove no more than one third of the total grass height with each cut. I always use the removable front mounted grass collection box to prevent thatch buildup. And finally, but very importantly, I vary the cutting direction every time I mow, always mowing in two directions, crossing the stripes at right angles to one another. The stripes are only temporary, and variety can be introduced by mowing different patterns, shapes and even letters into the lawn. Here I had some fun cutting the logo from my website, engelskarga.com, into the lawn, and on another occasion mowing around the letters instead. Traditional lawn edging is all about tidiness. Not only does it look excellent when done well, but it's practical too. Having a distinct boundary between a lawn and border or path makes lawn care easier and helps prevent grass invading borders and paths too. In fact, when using a cylinder mower like mine, it's the only sensible way to enable mowing right up to and over the lawn edge without risking damage to the strike plate and blades of the mower. The traditional method for creating a lawn edge involves simply cutting the turf with a garden spade or special edging iron, either by following a guide wire or simply using eye measurement. Due to damage from heavy rainfall and winter erosion, I chose to install EverEdge, the flexible steel lawn edging system from the UK, and the results I think speak for themselves. The Spear and Jackson edging shears I used to maintain the edges were my grandfather's and have certainly hundreds of edging miles on their cloth. They've been sharpened many times and still cut wonderfully well. In use for well over 60 years, they've cut garden edges in the English counties of Oxfordshire and Essex, and during the last decade, under my ownership, in the Norwegian counties of Møre Romsdal and Hordaland. Apart from sound initial construction and regular mowing, the most important lawn care procedures I use are raking, aerating and top dressing, which I do as my main spring lawn care regime. Although elsewhere this procedure is done in autumn, I've experienced better results here by top dressing in late April or early May, whenever daytime temperatures are reaching at least 10 degrees Celsius and the grass is growing well. After the long Norwegian winter, top dressing helps turf to recover quickly. Although it's a technique used by professional greenkeepers, in my opinion, top dressing can be of huge benefit for private lawns. Since my lawns are small, I'm able to perform the whole process cheaply and manually using a simple selection of tools. Firstly, I mow the lawn short. Raking is then done in order to remove dead leaves, moss, and accumulated dead organic material from the lawn, also known as thatch. Then comes the most labour intensive part, the aerating. I use a standard garden fork to spike the turf with hundreds of holes to a depth of 15 centimetres in order to help with drainage and air circulation at root level. I start at one end, taking care not to tread on the spiked areas. Top dressing involves applying a mix of sand and organic material evenly over the surface of the lawn. I use a good old wheelbarrow to mix the top dressing, which is approximately 70% sand to 30% organic compost, which must be free from weed seed. I usually buy a ready mixed lawn dressing from the garden centre and add in extra sand in the wheelbarrow. 
Importantly, I also add grass seed to this mix, a technique known as overseeding, which helps the lawn to thicken up even faster in spring. Using a large plank, although a ladder will do, I then drag the dressing evenly over the lawn, filling most of the holes. Having given the dressing 48 hours to settle, I then use a standard broom to brush the excess dressing well into the grass and drainage holes, leaving the grass blades showing above the dressing. The rest is taken care of by the explosive Norwegian spring. It nearly always rains heavily within a week of top dressing, and with the added warm spring sunshine, I can almost see the grass growing. I wait until the dressing has settled well before resuming my spring mowing program, gradually lowering the mower blades. Norwegian gardeners are obsessed with limey, and every spring they rake their mossy lawns before spreading vast quantities of garden lime over the remaining grass. This is often unnecessary in my view. Our soil is only slightly acidic here. I know because I check it. Unless the grass seems to be struggling and pH falls to well below 6, I won't consider adding lime. Feeding on the other hand is important. I fertilise about once a month from May through to August. I use a high nitrogen feed until July to help stimulate leaf growth and finish the annual feeding with a final autumn feed in August or September which is higher in phosphates to stimulate root growth. Our grass growing season usually ends in late September with the first frosts. I reckon that if I can get grass to grow well here in a damp, cool, shady garden in Bergen, it can probably be done anywhere. Have a go.